Buccaneers 1 and 2 take on the Rams. Rams are 3 and 0. Oh. Game has a 49 and a half point over under as well. The Rams are 9 and a half point home favorites. We know Jared Goff's a lot better at home. We have him at QB8. You feel comfortable with Goff? Yes. Yeah, I, I really like Goff this week. Uh, the whole home road narrative that I've been pushing against seems to have been true, at least so far, and he is at home. While the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense has looked better, they obviously were beat by Daniel Jones pretty heavily last week. So I, I think at home, the Rams, this is a bounce back game to me for the Rams. Yes, they're 3-0, and but you haven't really loved the offense because you haven't loved Jared Goff. You haven't loved Todd Gurley. I actually think both players have a bounce back game. I think they're going to try to get Gurley going in this. So I, I really like the Rams this week. Do you buy into the reports that, you know, Gurley at 15 touches a game, they actually want to get him the 25? No. That was that was coach speak when he was asked a question about that number saying, yeah. But if you listen to him, Sean McVay does go on to say, I don't believe the number thing, but he said, I want to get him in more of a rhythm and set him up to succeed. That's where he's been blaming himself, and we've seen that with Gurley. That's where you've been blaming him. Yes, I've been blaming <laughs> him because why aren't you getting him involved in the screen game, getting him on, you know, in a rhythm? And if that's an effort given by Sean McVay, I think, look, Gurley's been out there. He's not, I mean, we're worried about the workload, but he's not currently injured. He's still the same talented guy. Before the season, if I had said he'd be three weeks in, 71% of the snaps on the season. I think we'd all have imagined so him being. He's a top ten guy. Exactly. Top five. Exactly. So we've been, you know, they have not taken him off the field. They're three and zero. Oh. That's a good sign. He's is he a buy low for you? Uh, if, if you believe McVay can, you know, even some small involvement in the passing game is going to change the narrative quite a bit. I traded for him this week uh, in our listener league because I think this week he's a buy low. That being said, if he balls out and looks amazing yeah i'm gonna listen to offers because i still worry about the long-term uh reliability peyton barber ronald jones you starting either guy in this one the rams the only place they have been beaten has been at the running back position because their corners are incredible and they have a great pass rush so occasionally running backs have done a few things against them giving up 22 and a half fantasy points but if you have to pick one where do you go uh I guess Ronald Jones because <laughs> please don't pick one. Is that the answer? Because it's just reactionary to what happened last week. This is a this is a tango that I want no part of. Evans and Godwin, you starting these guys against these yes. incredible corners? Yeah, I yes, think you, you have probably to. have to based on where they were drafted, who they are, and what your the rest of your lineup is, but I'm I'm expecting a poor game out of Jameis Winston against the Rams. So that Evans obviously coming does off. not bode well for Evans and Godwin. Evans coming off the eighth best fantasy game by a wide receiver over the last 10 years. And we were on the other end of one of those, yeah. and it didn't feel good. Thanks, Mike. <clears throat> Cooper Cup, Brandon Cooks, Robert Woods. That's the order you'd start these guys? Yes. Yeah, you, you have to go that way, even though Robert Woods, he's seeing the exact same target share as Cooper Cup. When you're watching the game, The there, there's a – there's a sink problem to me right now with Jared Goff and Robert Woods. The targets are just they're not they're not as catchable. They're just, they're not as nice as these Cooper Cup receptions where I mean he's running free and wide open. One, so one so thing some of it's on Woods. Yeah, one thing that's been interesting, if you go back and look at the matchups and who's been guarding who, the top corner for the first three weeks has, has been more on Woods. And I wonder after last week if that starts to shift, if if defenses start to say, We need to look at Cup. As the, as the one, put our best guy there. Well, you see It'll be Cup, interesting he's just going in the, forward. He's, he's just in the, in the slot, slot yeah. so I don't think you're going to see that. I think, it, I think it, it'll be interesting if at home, if we see Woods in this game not be able to kind of break through, I think fantasy owners are going to get pretty worried about his production and where he it, drafted him. Fair. Because he, he's never really had the, the high-end upside, so you at least want to have the 10, 12 points a week. I think Howard has an okay game in this one. I really do. Howard is my number 10 tight end. And it's terrifying. Like I've oh, still got to him be as, at ten. Yeah, because oh. he, he should be good. He should have been good week one, two, and three. He was fine last week. I think he's probably you'll, he'll see more targets this week. I think they're going to need to utilize him, Godwin, if the Rams' defense focuses on slowing down Mike Evans and those corners on the outside. That's that's my guess. You know, you got to put Winston in the position where 
he can evade this pass rush with some help underneath. I hope Howard is that guy for fantasy purposes. I'm fine starting him. You guys ready to move on? Yep. Hey, want to have a cup of coffee with me? Click subscribe. We'll hang out. We'll do it together. Make your team the best.